Welcome to Crypto Plus, where we bring you the latest information on cryptos, blockchains, definance and futuristic investment vehicles. Today is Saturday the 24th of July 2021 and we're looking at major US banks now offering wealthy and less wealthy clients access to cryptocurrency funds. We ask the question, is this a sign that cryptocurrencies are now part of our financial and investment infrastructure? Or is this just a passing fad to earn these banks additional fees? So let's take a look. Well, our first article is from Bloomberg Wealth, dated July 21st, just two days ago. The headline was the ultra rich are turning to crypto after driving the SPAC boom. A Goldman Sachs survey found that nearly half the family offices the bank does business with want to add digital currencies to their stable of investments. Now this belies the argument that a number of central banks and major banks have been making decrying to some degree cryptocurrencies and yet we're finding the customers are interested. Firms that manage the wealth and personal affairs of rich people are increasingly looking to make bets on crypto. That's according to Goldman Sachs Group Inc, which found that nearly half the family offices it does business with want to add digital currencies to their stable of investments. The bank reported that 15% of respondents in a recent survey, which included responses from more than 150 family offices worldwide, are already that's the important thing, already invested in cryptocurrencies. Another 45% would be interested in diving into the space as a hedge for higher inflation, prolonged low rates, and other macroeconomic developments following a year of unprecedented global monetary and fiscal stimulus. Now, there is no real evidence, simply because of the age of cryptocurrencies, to show that they are a hedge against inflation, unlike Gold, which has proven to be not a perfect hedge, but certainly one of the better hedges, and silver to a slightly less extent than gold, and we produced videos on this a little over a year ago. The interest from family offices show how these sometimes secretive companies that manage the affairs of the rich are turning into a force across multiple markets. Of the firms that participated in the survey, 22% had assets under management of $5 billion or more, and 45% oversaw $1 billion to $4.9 billion. Some family offices have long been investors in private equity and real estate, but have recently been one of the biggest drivers of the boom in special purpose acquisition companies, or SPACs. Just like that phenomenon, the past year's crypto market frenzy has lured mainstream financial institutions, athletes and celebrities. As family offices grow in size and influence, critics are also pushing for more regulation, especially after the implosion of Bill Wang's Arcasios Capital Management hit banks with billions of dollars in losses. Respondents in the survey also indicated interest investing in the digital asset ecosystem. The majority of families want to talk to us about blockchain and digital ledger technology, said Mina Flynn, who helps lead private wealth management for Goldman. There are many who think that this technology is going to be as impactful as the internet has been from an efficiency and productivity perspective. I'll just read one more paragraph. Other survey respondents, however, indicated that they still had underlying concerns about the long-term value of cryptocurrencies, despite the financial industry's more recent embrace of crypto and emerging blockchain technologies. Bitcoin, the largest cryptocurrency, is now more than 50% below its record high, whose levels were near $65,000 in mid-April. Prices, which on Tuesday slid below $30,000 for the first time in a month, are still up, though, more than 230%, from a year earlier. So this is already highlighting the fact that cryptocurrencies are on investors' agenda. And we would be foolish to ignore that. 
Now, something happened, literally, just two days ago. And we'll have a quick look at this. Bitcoin rises past 32,000 as Musk, Dorsey discuss bull case. And we'll take a look at this because, quite frankly, it is relevant and it is something that we have referred to previously. Bitcoin hovers around 32,000 after boost from Musk, Arxwood. Bitcoin steadied as traders mulled the largest cryptocurrency's next move following a rebound stoked by comments from Elon Musk, Jack Dorsey and Kathy Wood. The digital asset was a little changed at $31,820 as of 7am in New York on Thursday after jumping 6.5% a day earlier. Other cryptos including Ether and Dogecoin held on to gains as did the Bloomberg Galaxy Crypto Index. Tesla Inc. Now this is the important thing because Elon Musk is the more prolific in making announcements really. Tesla Inc. already owns Bitcoin but Chief Executive Officer Musk revealed at a conference on Wednesday that his space exploration company SpaceX also does. He added he'd like to see the token succeed and that he personally has bought Bitcoin, Ethereum and Dogecoin. ARK Investment Manager's LLC's Wood said corporations should consider adding Bitcoin to their balance sheets, while Dorsey described it as resilient. Yesterday's debate did undoubtedly provide some comfort to the markets, said Ulrich Leik, Executive Director, Crypto Hedge Fund, ARK36. However, the jury is still out whether this positive spark will bring enough confidence to change the direction of markets. Some $1.3 trillion has been wiped off the market value of cryptocurrencies since mid-May. Bitcoin has faced a range of obstacles, including stepped-up regulatory scrutiny in China, Europe and the US, and concerns about the energy needed by the computers underpinning it. Investors have also generally become more cautious about speculative assets. Billionaire Musk said Bitcoin mining is shifting towards renewable energy and his company will likely resume accepting it as payment for electric cars. The token has bounced back after sliding below $30,000 earlier in the week, a round number viewed as a key line of support by technical analysts. The latest bounce reflects the third time since late 2019 that Bitcoin has found support at its 55-week moving average. The fear, though, in the market was that if Bitcoin breaks below the $30,000 mark, which it did for a couple of days, the price will move lower violently, said Naeem Aslam, Chief Market Analyst with Ava Trade Limited. In reality, that is not what we have seen. The Bitcoin price has been stable and we've not seen any panic selling. Scott Minard, Chairman and Chief Investment Officer of Guggenheim Investment, said Bitcoin could yet fall towards $15,000. Steen Jacobson, Chief Investment Officer at Saxo Bank, said a sustainable break above 32000 is needed for Bitcoin to dig itself out of a hole. Bitcoin's advance this year has shrunk to about 10% following a slide from an April record of almost 65000 That compares with a 16% jump in the S&P 500 index in 2021. Proponents argue the virtual currency offers an inflation hedge and will win wider institutional acceptance. Such narratives were always controversial and remain in question, though Bitcoin's most ardent fans continue to predict big long-term gains. Sorry, returns. Or both. Okay, we see two sides of the argument. The one is Crypto could very well rise well above 30,000 or could equally fall. And that is up to the market to decide. What we can say, though, is that there is increasing interest in cryptocurrencies, particularly the main ones. And we'll look at something that's just been published about what JP Morgan has had to say about this. Bitcoin about face. JP Morgan opens crypto trading to all clients. 
In an ironic twist, given CEO Jamie Dimon's well-established distrust of the industry, JP Morgan has reportedly become the first major US bank to provide all wealth management clients with access to Bitcoin and other cryptocurrency funds. Advisors in JP Morgan's $630 billion wealth management division can now accept orders to buy and sell five crypto products, including Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust, Bitcoin Cash Trust, Ethereum Trust, Ethereum Classic Products, and Osprey's Funds Bitcoin Trust. The policy change became effective on July 19th, according to an internal memo obtained by Business Insider. We are excited to be onboarded to the JP Morgan Wealth platform. OBTC remains the lowest priced publicly traded Bitcoin fund in the US, and we believe JP Morgan clients will see value in the product. Greg King, founder and CEO of Osprey Funds, told Forbes. The new policy applies to all JP Morgan clients, including self directed clients using the Chase trading app. Affluent clients of JP Morgan advisors and the richest tier of clients served by the private bank. Advisors are not allowed to recommend crypto products to clients, and the clients must ask to make crypto trades. So, this is almost essentially what used to be termed execution only. The advisor cannot say, oh, we recommend cryptos. But if the client says, I'm interested in cryptos, they can offer the funds. Previously, JPM only allowed private wealth clients to invest in an actively managed Bitcoin fund with crypto firm NYDIG providing custody services. The expanded access to crypto products for JP Morgan clients comes as retail interest in the crypto market is on the rise especially after Bitcoin hit its all-time high price of $65,654 on April 14, 2021. Since then, the market's deflated. At the time of writing, Bitcoin is trading at hands at $32,263. However, retail demand for gaining exposure to the volatile asset class as a store of value or portfolio diversifier remains strong. Mary Callahan Erdois, JP Morgan's Asset and Wealth Management Chief, told Bloomberg in July that many of the bank's clients want to invest in digital currencies. Observers will now look to see if other Wall Street banks that have also offered limited crypto exposure to select clients follow suit. In March, Morgan Stanley began offering clients with at least $2 million in assets held access to three funds with Bitcoin exposure. And in June, Goldman Sachs began offering crypto futures trading to institutional clients and hedge funds. So there we have it. If cryptocurrencies are not likely to be part of the investment future, why are the banks, major banks, starting to invest and offer the various funds? Now, you could argue they're just jumping on an opportunistic bandwagon to make more money by way of fees and commissions, etc. Or perhaps now, and this is something we all need to ponder, are cryptocurrencies now part of our investment and financial asset infrastructure or not? Only time will tell, but for those interested in investing, we'll see very shortly how committed they really are. Thank you so much for listening. Please, if you like what we've covered today, give us a thumbs up, subscribe and press the bell sign. Place your views and comments below. They are all read, if not always answered to. And let's see what other institutions now begin to offer cryptocurrencies as part of an investment portfolio or of their wealth advisory systems. Until next time. Disclaimer. Under no circumstances, what we cover in these videos should be deemed as investment advice, nor an invitation to invest in any of the vehicles or products we mention. We're not authorized practicing financial advisors, and you should please be minded of that. Before you consider any investment whatsoever in any field, we recommend that you speak to a regulated professional financial advisor. Thank you. Have a great day.